Okay, for those of you loyal watchers of the Periscope show, we're officially moving it over to YouTube uh, on my page. So subscribe to the page. Subscribe to the page. We've done the Periscope show through Twitter for the last, I don't know, several years. It is going exclusively uh, no longer on Twitter. It's going to be on YouTube. So if you want to watch, I will also put it on Twitter and link it on Instagram. But it's going to be exclusively now on YouTube under the heading Bald Truth. That's what we're going to call the show. We've never really had a name for it. Uh, so we'll see how the name sticks. But it's going to be under the Bald Truth on my YouTube page. And we're just going to rock and roll. It's the same thing as we did on the Periscope show, just on a different platform. Uh, nothing is going to change as of right now. So today, let's start. I mean, there's several big stories. Uh, Tom Herman was fired. Justin Fields beat Trevor Lawrence and thoroughly outplayed him. The coaching carousels in full swing. It's starting to be leaked from Rap Sheet, from Schefter, who's going to get fired. Most of these people we know, right? Adam Gase, Doug Marone. But to me, the curveballs of the guys that are going to be in this mix aren't just the Robert Salas and Eric Bieniemies. The college coaches, if Urban Meyer decides to get involved, if Matt Campbell decides to get involved, some of these people that we have slotted in these head coaching spots ain't going to be there. There, there. There's not like, there are more coaches then there are head coaching openings. At least as of right now, especially Doug Peterson's going back. Matt Nagy's going to return. I, you know, maybe there's some random mysterious firing. But as of right now, there are way more names that we talk about than actual vacancies. So there's going to be controversy with people not getting jobs, especially if these college guys decide to jump in. And uh, I'll give you some of the intel that I have. Uh, but let's start with last night's game or yesterday's game in Clemson and Ohio State. Alabama thoroughly outplayed Notre Dame. They, it wasn't even a contest, like we knew, right? It was a huge, they were a huge favorite going in. Nick Saban's the GOAT, beat the shit out of them. Uh, the other game, like, it was an upset. It was a legitimate upset. And two guys, Trevor Lawrence, I've been saying this for a while. I've been telling people in the NFL this. Like, I think he's overhyped. And I think Trevor Lawrence is a really good player. I think he's a no-brainer, number one overall pick. But the hype on Trevor Lawrence has exceeded his ability. To me, Trevor Lawrence is equally, if not more, hyped than Andrew Luck. And Andrew Luck's hype was fucking in, in, insane. It was nuts. Then he came into the leagues, playoffs, playoff win, AFC Championship. Three straight years. A shitty franchise in terms of the franchise was in chaos. The GM and the head coach didn't get along. The head coach wasn't any good. The general manager wasn't any good. It was a disaster. He saved. You know, the ship would have sank. He fucking saved it. And he was awesome. He was incredible, right? And you can nitpick them all you want. Every team in the league would sign up for an Andrew Luck without hesitation. The Colts will get on their knees this offseason, they should, and beg him to come back. That, that, that would be my first move if I'm Chris Ballard. Special player. But I don't. If, is Trevor Lawrence going to be that good? He better because that's where the hype is. Now, Justin Fields, five-star, huge recruit like Trevor Lawrence, goes to Georgia, can't beat out Jake Fromm. That's more of a Kirby Smart problem. As we saw yesterday, like Kirby Smart... Like, you need to fucking tone it down, buddy. His antics on the sideline, borderline embarrassing in my opinion. If you need a constant get-back guy as the head coach, we got issues. You're the head coach. You're not an assistant. You're the head coach. And then you celebrate that game like you just won the fucking Super Bowl? Like, come on, buddy. Come on, Kirby. Are you going to win a national championship? Because I'll I'll bet against you. Not with you acting like that. And I'm all for being true to who you are. And I'm all for getting fired up and motherfucking a player like Saban, Urban Meyer. They do it. But Kirby is, to me, over, over the top. He, he's exhausting. And he made a terrible decision. He chose Jake Fromm over Justin Fields. Ohio State benefited. But, and this season's been weird. I've been saying it for a long, long time. Justin Fields, and I throw Trevor Lawrence in this, you know, kind of uh, area too. But where Justin Fields is going to get a lot of credit in NFL circles. The media pounded the table. They, well, one, they love lockdowns. They wanted everything locked down all year long. Most of them still do. All of them wanted college football to end, which is kind of funny. Like, they get to dictate other people. It's why I've struggled with the lockdown thing. I don't tell anyone else whether they should be able to work, whether they should be able to do what they want to do. You know, it's, it's easy for the media to tell, well, they're getting paid, Justin Fields, you can't play football. And Justin Fields, and he earned so much respect around the country, he said, fuck you. He didn't actually say that. He probably did, but he didn't tweet. That. He did everything in his power to get football rolling. He was the most outspoken player in the second biggest country, uh, conference in the country about getting football back on. 
So he earned my respect because the number one question you ask when you scout a player is, how much does he like football? How much does he like playing? You can't argue that with Justin Fields. So then you start his character, check, check. Want to play football, check. Uh, Refuse to tap out, check. Then he plays this season, which was a little hit or miss. But it's a weird season. The Big Ten rules. Games are getting canceled. I, I, I talk to some people in the NFL and I go, how are you going to evaluate these players? Who knows if they were doing virtual, not practicing that week. Were they able to eat their normal you know, routines on campus? There are a lot of question marks. It's going to be very difficult for many GMs to evaluate this film. And Justin Fields' film was kind of all over the map. And then he goes into that game against the most hyped player since Andrew Luck. He takes an enormous shot. I mean, every human watching that game when he takes that shot from 47 went, ouch, that fucking hurt. And you could see him grimacing, who knows, broken rib, deep bone bruise, it it hurt. I don't need to see uh, him on the injury report to know. He got crunched. And what did he do? Shook it off, came back in. So toughness, check. And then in the biggest game of his career, throws six touchdowns, destroys Brett Venables, who makes like two and a half million dollars and many of those Clemson defenders are going to be in the NFL, he eviscerated them. He was unreal. And I said it on the 3 and Out podcast last week that I'm a, I like Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson has nothing on his resume. Nothing even close. And this is no fault of his own. When you play at BYU, especially in a corona season, you have a breakout season, you, his schedule sucked. It was not very good. He can't control that. That's out of his control. I don't blame him for that. But the facts are the facts. He played the teams he played. Justin Fields uh, played Clemson and eviscerated him. Zach Wilson can't compare to that. And now he gets the opportunity against Alabama back-to-back games that if he just has another four or five touchdown game, if they upset it, I just don't see how he's not the number two quarterback off the board. I I don't see how that's possible. And if he's not, like, I think it could be a pretty big mistake. Like, I, I, I'm not trying to overreact to one game. And the one thing people don't understand, like, NFL people don't overreact to one game. You should never hire and fire a coach off one game. You should never select a player off one game. That's not the way it works. Like, you would never, you know, part of, like, Apple didn't just have one good quarter. They've been doing it for fucking 50, 40 years, right? It's about sustaining it over time. Part of being a good college player and getting drafted really high, most of the guys that have success are doing it two or three years, doing having a body of work. Trevor Lawrence has a body of work. Justin Fields now does have a body of work. Now, we can nitpick it, but he played last year pretty well, took a big step. I think people question, and we'll get into the coaching carousel, like Ryan Day's name. I think most NFL coaches, you think Ryan Day is like Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, Sean Payton, Andy Reid? No. At least what they're coaching Justin Fields to do, they're, they're not doing that. They're just doing everything humanly possible to win that week to try to win the national championship. In the NFL with a young player, you develop them, you're thinking big picture, you sign them to long-term contracts. Like Ryan Day's living in the moment this year with Justin Fields, as he should be. They're not trying to change mechanics. It just It's not possible. They don't even have the time. So NFL people look at college coaching like, could we do better? And sometimes that's not true. You don't necessarily think that with Alabama. Like when you get an Alabama player, they're typically ready to roll. If they don't play well for you, that's typically a you problem. (laughs) You know, like remember early in the decade, it was like Alabama guys don't work. No, you just pick the wrong Alabama guy. Because if you pick the right Alabama guy, they're good, (laughs) right? Like Amari Cooper's underachieved and he fucking averages like 80 catches a year. Just go around, like Alabama guys crush. They're good. So I I, I just think that I, I, I see under no circumstance, Trevor Lawrence is not the number one pick. And I would expect if when the dust settles for Justin Fields to go number two. The other question mark that I keep hearing from people in the league is Zach Wilson weighs 200 pounds. There aren't many wide or, uh, quarterbacks in the NFL that weigh 200 pounds. Most of these guys weigh 220, 230 pounds. You're getting hit by the Aaron Donalds, Fletcher Cox, Khalil Max, the Boses. <laughs> Those guys are hitting you and hitting you hard. So that, 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 these are issues. Like Devontae Smith. I love Devontae Smith. Who doesn't? He's about to win the Heisman. He weighs 166 pounds. 166 pounds. Like, that, that, that is going to be a question mark. Uh, I think he's going to go high. I talked to someone yesterday that was like, I think Waddle could go above Devontae Smith. Which, if, you just, if I just tweeted that out, people would be like, oh, you're fucking crazy. You're nuts. What are you talking about? You don't even know what you're saying. Just the reality. 
You know, it, it just is. It might happen. Uh, I, I'd say the big news of the day is Tom Herman being fired and Steve Sarkeesian being getting the job. And I think there are two major elements of this. Let's start with Tom Herman. And I see this a lot. Like, he got a raw short end of the deal. He got, he got screwed. He did not get enough time. You know, t- Texas is so knee-jerk. At the end of the day in life, if you are an employee and you don't own the business, if you don't own the institution, if you're not in control, you can be fired at any moment, whether you're doing a good or bad job. Coaches, it's no different than any other fucking walk of life. There are a lot of coaches that keep jobs that should not. And there are a lot of coaches that are good that lose jobs. You're not in control of your employment. You are not the boss. You don't sign the checks. So did Tom Herman get screwed? Did he not? Is he any good? I don't know. I don't give a fuck. I just, I never thought, I thought he was kind of average, but I'm, I'm crying no tears. They're like, oh, you know, he got the, he, he was told by the athletic director he was coming back, you know, recruiting, and then he didn't. Like, yeah, Tom Herman fucking works for people. And if they don't think he's good enough, given what they're paying him, see ya. And another narrative I love is like, there's not enough money for the kids. They paid him $20 million for him and his staff to go away. Do you understand who's cutting these checks? Like the institution is not cutting the check. They're getting the money from the boosters. A booster with a lot of money or several boosters cut the checks. They're like, what about all the other sports? Yeah, football matters the most. Football gets the most attention. It gets the most cash. It creates an athletic department. There is no college athletics without college football. Nothing does not exist. So, like, it's in its own little world. All these media people that complain, like, I thought there was no money. There's always fucking money when it comes to football. Football keeps the cash flowing. So, yeah, they could, any to any major university, if they needed to get together, $50 million, they could, if they really wanted to. Now, some universities don't want to do that. Some boosters aren't willing to sign the check, but the money's always there with the big boys. That's the way major college football works. There's a lot of fucking money lined up. And when it's, you know, uh, I, I would say when, when programs like a Nick Saban or Dabo Sweeney have success, all that money gets put toward the football program, excelling, doing more, and you start running circles. Ohio State, uh, it's not a fair fight, right? Nick Saban and Dabo and Ryan Day slash Urban, they start getting that booster money that pays the shitty coaches to go away, starts siphoning you cash for new cool things and that's why those guys are kicking ass Texas the problem is they're never gonna win enough I think Texas my hot take most overrated job in the country I I also kind of include USC like that these jobs are talked about like they are a top two or three job in the country and maybe in theory it on the whiteboard it is but a lot of things like in academia work on the whiteboard and then you get in reality and it doesn't work. I've been told USC should be the kicking the shit out of everyone most of my life. Do you know when it did that? When they had Pete Carroll for about eight year stretch. Other than that, they've been above average to average. Texas, beside like a seven year stretch with Mac Brown, Oklahoma kicks their ass. Oklahoma runs circles around them. They are never gonna be Oklahoma. They are not Oklahoma. That's just a reality. And I think they sell themselves of that they, they are. And then they hire a guy like Sark, which I was thinking about Steve Sarkeesian this morning when I saw that. And I know a lot of people that know him that really like him. But he was fired. One, when he left from Washington to USC, there is no one in the football community that didn't think Washington upgraded. Why? Because they did. Chris Peterson is a much superior coach than Steve Sarkeesian. And then he goes to USC and he underachieves a little bit. He's okay. He's solid. uh, Because he can recruit. But he shows up to a meeting, clearly has a drinking problem or whatever, and shows up to a meeting drunk and is relieved of his duties, fired that day. It was a big deal. Nick Saban, I I don't think people, because just the way society works, we forget things in the past, we just are living in the moment, we're just kind of moving forward, moving forward, society goes so fast, you just forget about everything in the rearview mirror. How insane it was with Lane, the way everything ended there, where his career went, and then Sark. Like, Lane, both those guys, wherever rock bottom is, those guys dug under rock bottom. Wherever that rock is on rock bottom, they were under the rock. So wherever rock bottom is, those two motherfuckers were under it. They went to Nick Saban, threw Jimmy Sexton, resurrected their career. One guy's now the culture at Ole Miss, who everyone kept acting like, 
Steve Sarkeesian was going to be the next coach at Alabama. I was like, yeah, I got that red flag. I would lean more Lane. Uh, I, I still think Lane has kind of in line to be the next coach at Alabama. Could be wrong. Uh, assuming the Dabo turns them down, which why wouldn't he? He's a legend at Clemson. He can do the same thing at Clemson as he can at Alabama, make the same money. I don't see him leaving. Plus, the conference is way easier. Like, another hot take, the ACC sucks. People make fun of the Pac-12, and it's deserved. The ACC is no different. They just have Clemson. You remove Clemson from the ACC, they're a joke conference. They're the fucking Mountain West on the Eastern Seaboard. That's just the truth. I watch these teams, they suck. Miami, North Carolina, Florida State's a joke. Like, the teams suck. So, to me, that's why Dabble should stay. He's running circles around the Manny Diaz's. I don't even know the fucking coach at Florida State. Norvell, Duke, Cutcliffe is 80 years old. Max, 70. I mean, he's kicking their ass for the foreseeable future. Notre Dame doesn't count. They just joined your conference this year for Corona. They're they're an independent. So you don't get to claim Notre Dame. Uh, but Sark and Lane, I mean, they should just... The, the Christmas cards, the thank you letters they should send to Nick for resurrecting their lives it's one thing to resurrect your career. You know, like Josh McDaniels. It went bad, like an asshole. But it wasn't like he showed up drunk to work. It wasn't rumors about crazy things going off the field. It was just he was an asshole. And he's not the first and he won't be the last head football coach to be an asshole. Maybe he needs to be a little nicer, not trying to be something he's not. But, like, if you get fired for being an asshole, like, shit happens. That's, that's just reality. But, like, Sark and Lane, especially Sark... Sark was fired for showing up to the morning meeting at USC intoxicated, wasted, like was slurring his words, had to be removed. Like that happened. No one even argues that. Like that's not even disputed. And however many years later, goes to Nick, really went to the Atlanta Falcons, goes to Nick, changed his life. So it's just, America, we love a good comeback story. Sark now is the head coach of Texas. I think it's a harder job. Then, uh, because he recruited well at Washington, he did not win. So just because you recruit well and everyone in the media is jerking you off, you got a top five recruiting class or top eight recruiting class, you go eight and five, they're going to fucking fire your ass. You know, you can't be doing what you did at Washington. I'd say anything less than 11 wins every year and then there's going to be some pressure to eventually beat Lincoln Riley, uh, which isn't going to happen anytime soon. But there's, this is not just, you know, I went nine and nine and three. I went 10 and three. I went nine and four, like, woohoo! Now, we're, we're paying you to try to fucking win, get to the playoffs. And I don't see how he's getting to the playoffs anytime soon. This is a pressure cooker. Uh, I, I understand why he takes the job. Everyone's moving to Austin. Um, but, you know, is what it is. The coaching carousel, I guess, where do we start? Urban Meyer? I, I think a lot of people think Urban Meyer is going to go to Jacksonville. I think Jacksonville is the worst job in the country, in, in the NFL. I think there are several college jobs that are better. Uh, but for Urban Meyer, maybe it makes some sense. It's a little under the radar. You get the first pick. Uh, it just, Urban Meyer's going to go to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And that, to me, I, I get it. They're getting Trevor Lawrence. They have all this cap space. They have all these draft picks. Like, okay. I, I, I bet the Titans and the fucking Colts kick your ass for years to come. Uh, now, Urban's a great coach. That's the one thing I will say. He has some sketchy moral judgment. Uh, it can't be argued. Aaron Hernandez happened on his watch. Right? The, the the chaos he left Florida's program is, that happened. Uh, Ohio State, the situation with his nephew or mentor's nephew, the wide receiver coach, like that happened. Now, did Tom Herman turn him in for that? I don't know. Some shady shit happened. But shady shit follows Urban Meyer. You know, it's like Nick Saban. Like, not shady shit just doesn't really happen with him. So, I, I, I think a lot of people, like Urban Meyer, really good coach, dominant college coach. Will it work in the league? We'll see. There are positives and negatives, right? You, when you hate a player, you can cut them. It's what I like most about the NFL. You're not stuck with any player. I don't want you on my roster. You're gone. Doesn't how it's a little more complicated in college with that. Uh, but you do. You also have roster turnover like this during the season. You need to bring in a practice squad guy. You need to bring in a street free agent. That guy might have to play on Sunday. That doesn't happen in college football. In college football, you bring up a freshman. You know, you have a sophomore that's been a backup that you've known for five years. You might be playing a guy in the league that shows up on Wednesday that you first meet over dinner on Tuesday. That guy might be your starting corner, your starting right tackle, your starting tight end. That shit happens all the time in the NFL. You become numb to it. So there is a transitional period. He can do the studying all he wants. But once you're in it, like you have to learn to adapt with it. I've been told by people that were around Nick Saban with the Miami Dolphins. That's what he struggled with. 
because you can't control everything. So that would be something to keep an eye on. Then, like I said, there are names. I, I've been told by reliable people that if the New York Jets offer Dan Mullen the job, he's gone. He's going to go to the New York Jets. And my pushback is not... There are certain college jobs that are better than pro jobs. Like, there was a report that if Urban Meyer uh, turns down the Jags, they're going to go after Ryan Day. If I, if I was friends with Ryan Day or I was his agent, I'd say, I think Ohio State's a better job than the Jags. I just think it's a better job. <laughs> like, to me, from Ohio State, you can go coach the Cowboys. You can go coach the fucking Packers. You know, one day. I, I, I'm not going to the Jags. Like, your NFL shots aren't going anywhere. We ain't leaving Ohio State for the Jags. I, I would recommend against that. I think Ohio State is a better co- job than the Jacks. I don't even think it's fucking close. Now, the Jets, I'd still probably say Ohio State is much more stable. Like, I, I wouldn't... Uh, Ohio State, to me, is the top two or three job in the country. It's better than many NFL jobs. Like the Houston Texans. I would much rather be the head coach at Ohio State. The Detroit Lions. Ain't even a question. <laughs> Are you fucking crazy? The Atlanta Falcons. Given their situation, cap hell... You maybe could make the argument, but still, I, I mean, I think Ohio State, all the jobs that are open, I, I would stay at Ohio State. Now, Iowa State, I do think there are questions like Dan Mullen at Florida. I think the SEC kind of wears you out. Uh, you can never be as good as long as Saban stays there. Georgia's cheating their ass off. I mean, so are you. And again, I'm pro-cheating. Like, I'm not, when I say these guys are getting paid, giving brown bags to players, I'm cool with that. I would do it too. Like, that's capitalism. I never believed in the NCAA arbitrary rules. I'm not a fan of arbitrary rules. You see it now during Corona. I'll follow laws, even if I disagree with them. I don't follow arbitrary rules that that like don't make any sense and are backed up by nothing. And that's what the NCAA is. It's why so many of these coaches fucking can't stand it. Uh, it's all, why I think Matt Campbell is... Is he going to stay at Iowa State? Uh, if he gets the opportunity to coach the Jets or the Falcons or one of these jobs. And all these names that we've been talking about, Robert Sala, Eric Bieniemy, Arthur Smith, Brian Dable. If Urban Meyer takes a job, if Matt Campbell takes a job, if the Jets were offered like Dan Mullen the job, where are the like seats at the table for these guys? I, I don't see it. <laughs> where do they exist? I think there are going to be a lot of guys that we have talked about shoe-ins to become head coaches that aren't going to have a spot at the table. That, and again, like going back, Arthur Smith going back to Tennessee or Brian Dable, I don't think these guys are locks to get head coaching jobs. We'll see what happens to the Chargers. They should fire Anthony Lynn, but you never know. Uh, I think Minnesota somewhat could throw a curveball. Mike Zimmer maybe be done. But with Doug Peterson going back, you know, how many jobs are going to be available? Five? The Jets, the Falcons, the Lions, the Texans. That's four. Uh... Am I missing someone that's already fired? The Texans, the Falcons, the Lions, the Jags, the Jets. So that's five. I don't know. We'll see. But again, like the page. Subscribe to the page. We'll keep these flowing. Appreciate everyone watching. Anyone that's coming over from Twitter, welcome. And we'll just keep rocking and rolling, baby.